picture this. You're 65 years old, you've worked hard for 40 years, and it's your last week of work before you retire. You've amassed a nest egg worth $500,000, and you plan to spend $4,000 net per month to maintain your lifestyle. Your social security benefit will give you net $2,300 per month, so you need another $1,700 per month to pay your bills and enjoy your retirement. So how do you structure your investments to cover your income needs and grow over the long term? I will show you how in this video. There are a lot of financial gurus on YouTube, but are you listening to a qualified professional who has actually helped somebody else retire successfully? I have spent the last decade of my life not only studying finance, but I manage millions of dollars for our clients who are approaching, newly, and in retirement. I know exactly how to build an investment allocation that will last 30 to 40 years and beyond, and today I'm going to share our strategy. Before I get started though, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. This helps us get this free information out to as many people as possible, and we so appreciate it. Okay, so I've read and heard a lot of stigma around retiring on less than a million dollars, and in my opinion, that's unwarranted. As long as your expenses fit your nest egg, you can absolutely retire successfully on $500,000. So why do you need to reconsider your investment strategy upon retirement anyway? Can't you just keep your portfolio as is and pull income as needed? Well, that depends. The biggest investment risk retirees face today is something called the sequence of returns risk. This is a phenomenon that involves the order and timing of poor investment returns and the timing and size of your withdrawals. So let's say that you had $500,000 in your nest egg and you retired at the beginning of 2022. You were invested exclusively in the S&P 500 index and you pulled out $4,000 per month or $48,000 that year to maintain your lifestyle. Well, the S&P 500 lost 19% that year. This means that you didn't just lose 19%, but you lost 23.8% because you also pulled out 4.8% as income. When you tap into your portfolio as it's losing value at the beginning of your retirement, your chances of running out of money over 20 years is significantly higher than someone with the same amount of money in withdrawals that experienced a bullish first few years of retirement. Because no one can control the sequence of returns of the stock market, it's crucial that you segment or bucket your money based on your income needs over different timeframes. That way, your lifestyle is always protected. Okay, so you're familiar with our bucketing strategy and understand that there are three buckets of money. The first bucket or the green bucket, the money you'll need during your first five years of retirement, the yellow bucket that will fund years five through 15, and the red bucket, which will fund years 15 plus. The buckets get more aggressive as the time frame increases and you must rebalance every several years to keep these buckets replenished. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how to bucket your $500,000 to provide that remaining $1,700 per month you need to maintain your lifestyle. Accounting for 3% annual inflation, you will need roughly $125,000 in bucket one, $300,000 in bucket two, and the remainder of $75,000 in bucket three. In bucket one, I would keep $50,000 in a high yield money market account. Current yields are between four and 5%. I would then ladder CDs and treasuries in six month to three year increments where yields are between five to 6%. That way, monies will be coming due every six months to one year to account for living expenses. Plus you're diversifying your interest rate risk. So let's break it down. The first bucket, has $125,000 in it. Again, I would put $50,000 in a high yield savings account. The best current yield I can find is 4.35%. Then you will put $25,000 in a one year CD at a 5.3% annual yield interest rate. Then put the remaining 50,000 in a three year fixed annuity at a 5.1% annual interest rate. So the overall yield of bucket one is about 5%. In bucket two, for $300,000, I would split it between 
a five-year fixed annuity at 5.45% per year, so 150,000 there, and then the remaining 150,000 in a high yield stock portfolio, or even an index fund, where the average rate of return over 10 years is seven to 10%. So the overall average return of bucket two will be five to 8%. In bucket three, the red bucket, there's $75,000 left. So let's put that into an ETF stock portfolio comprised mainly of low cost index funds and maybe some sector funds too. So the overall average return of bucket three is seven to 10% per year. Please keep in mind that these are rates from March 2024, and these rates are changing rapidly. So please be sure to check current rates as they will probably not be the same as the ones I'm using here. So to maintain these buckets, you can use the yield from bucket two to automatically replenish bucket one. So you can stave off pulling principal from bucket two for as long as possible. Every 10 years, you can trim bucket three to replenish bucket two. This allows you to enjoy your retirement without the stress of the stock market's volatility impacting your ability to fund your lifestyle. If you have a pension, this will lower the amounts needed in buckets one and two, as you'll need less income overall from your nest egg. Last point, these buckets are not set in stone. So if you're a more aggressive investor, you can fill bucket one with one to three years of expenses instead of five. You can use bucket two to fund years three through 10 and bucket three to fund years 10 plus. As long as you're sticking to a risk managed plan, you're doing the right thing. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and comment below. If you're approaching or newly retired and you need help preparing, please reach out via our website or by calling our office. See you next time.